about the power of forgiveness. And you may think that this is just a Christian stuff that is good for the church and nothing else. And you'll be surprised when you hear what happened to me and how far reaching that power can be. If you have ever traveled, and I'm sure most of you have, you've been a migrant, what they call a migrant these days, an expat, you know, living or passing through a place that is not originally yours. And then you expose yourself automatically by this choice to the commentaries and you know comments and uh, passing words of all kinds of people that cross your your path and after all they didn't invite you there yeah you came and they don't know why and how you came that's not none of it their business but you're there and they look at you and they look at you obviously with their own preconceived ideas what they have been taught about your kind of people where you come from and so on and so forth in fact they don't even know where you come from and then they will be saying things and you may think oh it doesn't matter what people say yeah it does actually you find out that if you're honest that it pains every word that is unkind as a way of pinching you scratching you, wounding you. Words like, where's your accent from? Where are you from? Oh, you are this, or you are that. And then you start reacting, you know. Imagine that I'm French. And after many years in Nigeria, I came back for holidays to see my family. And someone said, where are you from? <laughs> I said, I'm French. They said, but you have an accent. Meaning, you don't sound French. Just imagine that. Your own country of origin, where you were born there, you schooled there, someone now tells you, with all innocent feelings, oh, you have a foreign accent. Actually, I became proud of it, yeah? <laughs> because I knew I'd unlearned my original accent and there was nothing bad about it. But you know that all kinds of things are told you. And professionally, there is another way people can attack you without thinking much about it. For example, one day, somebody said, I heard you were a professor uh, in a university where you were. And I said, yes. And they said, well, I guess that is professor and professor. Do you understand that? So that was an insult, not on me, but on the place of higher learning I was part of that I was actually proud of being part of and on the country I came from. So there are all kinds of things. Now what do you do? You start receiving this and it pains and it pains and it piles up like drip drip of vinegar. And when you had come with the best of intentions, you end up turning your back on people saying, anyway, they don't want me. Rejection sets in. Feelings of rejection, and it's not just feeling, it's a reality. People are telling you, you don't belong here. Why are you, have you come? In fact, you should return where you come from. They don't say it, but that is the, the back. And you know, people now uh, are putting that under the skin color. They tell you, yeah, because I'm black. Am I black? In fact, I don't know what color I am. I was colorless in Nigeria until I came to the UK. 
And then I was on the phone and say, people say, sorry, there's no vacancy, but maybe that will be for ethnic minorities. And I was wondering which kind of ethnic minority is that? And you know the result of this is you start being bitter. Bitter and bitter. And for many years, people were asking me, you, you have not yet sought nationality, citizenship, why? And I was saying, I can't do that. And I was giving reasons, genuine reasons, why I would never do it. Until one day, God touched me with the reality that I was having a grudge against people that didn't deserve it, actually. Just like Jesus said on the cross, forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they are doing. And it was exactly what was going on. And so it took me years. And I wish it will not take you years. If you are somewhere else, somewhere else than what, when you started, where you were not born, examine yourself and check. And you know the result. The day I was made aware of God, telling me that I had to repent. I had to say sorry first to God and then adjust to the fact that I was guilty when I never thought I was. But the whole Bible says that whether you know or you don't know, if you have sinned, you are guilty. Sinning meaning saying or doing something that is against God's will. If God brought you, brought you somewhere, he's expecting you to be a worthy ambassador, not a grudging fellow. And so I decided to take a step. I said, all right, okay. I forgive everybody that has said something said something bad, or so I thought. Asking for forgiveness, praying for these people, and then I decided to apply for citizenship, to tell God, yes, I acknowledge and recognized that you have sent me here to do something good. I applied and I became a citizen. And this didn't stop there. The immediate result was that I started feeling concerned for the people, praying for them, praying for the authorities, praying for those in government. And then I started having a fluency in the language that I didn't have to that degree. I have been bilingual for many years. I know other languages too. But I never accepted that particular language, English, as, a non, as, a, as more than a bicycle, something I used because there is no other way. Now, I started thinking in English far more than before. And so this obviously has facilitated a lot of things. In communication and it's, it's funny you know, because English was not my original language so think of it if you want to obey God and if you want to be functional fully functional in God's plan and will you have to be forgiving not just once or twice but daily forgiving everything and everybody and say God they don't know what they are doing I pray for them I wish them well bless them Lord and it will permeate all areas of your life you become at ease peace will flood you so I invite you take peace that God has given you 
and follow his way. Bless you.